D and D are out of Star Wars, and we got a new Mandalorian trailer. Welcome to the newest episode of SDW Super Dario World. It's a me, Dario. Woohoo! <laughs> All right, so this is going to be a Star Wars heavy day. First off, let me give you a quick reminder. You can listen to the podcast in the iHeartRadio app. Just type in the show presents Super Dire World. You'll find it right there. You can also find it on SoundCloud. Oh, well, I'm a little bit low here, ain't I? Uh, you can also find it on SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, and also on Podcast Addict, Spotify, and CastBox as Super Dire World Podcast. Also, you can find on all those same things, you can find my new podcast, Super Dario World in Espanol. I load that every Saturday. Also, later on, I don't know, I think tomorrow probably, I will load my review of Call of Duty Modern Warfare at ReviewNation.net, which so far, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. I'm enjoying it. And I've been doing live stream. I finally did, finally figured out how to save it. Um, so I loaded my first live stream yesterday on Twitch. Uh, you can find that as Super Dire World. Uh, it's in Spanish. So, uh, honestly, I did pretty terrible. I, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I, I was not at my best gaming-wise. So, it's hard, man. It's hard trying to do the two things at once. Trying to focus on playing and killing some bastards. And at the same time, trying to talk about stupid things. But, you know, practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. Fortunately, I did it late. Well... Fortunately, unfortunately, I did it late, so there wasn't much people. I, I, I learned a valuable thing. Don't do it that late because a part of you kind of wants to get going a little bit, you know, like a, maybe yell or something, but it's late, so it's probably a bad idea. Anyway, uh, yeah, you can check that out. Again, Super Dire World on Twitch. Today, I'll, I'll, I'll probably just keep doing uh, Modern Warfare for a few days because I got to do the review. Anyway. Let's also, any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can find me at Dario the Show on Instagram. Uh, and, but okay, let, let's get into this, because first off, let's talk about the good things. Let's talk about the Mandalorian trailer. For those of you who don't know, the Mandalorian series that's going to be an exclusive of Disney Plus just dropped its new trailer, and it looks great. It looks great. Beautiful. Uh, visually, it looks fantastic. Um, the story seems it's like it's going to be kind of dark. Uh, It's going to be kind of violent, which I'm really enjoying. And uh, Bill Burr's in it for some really weird reason in the trailer. You can see Bill Burr, his character. It's really weird. But uh, the the big thing is, the thing that I really enjoyed here is that it really feels, it has kind of like a a Firefly type feel, you know, like a a sci-fi Western feel to it, which I love. I love sci-fi Westerns. They're not enough of them out there. They're not enough good Westerns out there. Well, modern... uh, uh, modern time westerns I, I love them they're great they're phenomenal and so sci-fi westerns even better so i'm excited for it honestly like i said the, the first thing that i thought when i was watching it was like dude this really feels like firefly I, obviously it's very different but it's i think it has something to do about gra- grabbing the six shooter from the hip and choo- boom i don't know point is i'm really i'm really liking what i'm seeing the kind of anti-hero vibe kind of darker story a little bit of violence we we needed that in the star wars universe you know we needed a little a little bit of violence just a little bit of a lot of violence that's what we need anyway looks pretty good now the big news that just dropped and i mean just drop and i am extremely happy about it but also get into a little bit of conspiracy theories about it is that game of thrones showrunners David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, henceforth known as D&D, uh, are officially leaving the Star Wars universe. Now, they were supposed to make a trilogy of movies that were supposed to come out in every two years. but And they're supposedly it was going to be based on the storyline of Star Wars The Old Republic, which is a great storyline. It's a phenomenal storyline. Highly recommend it. But uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's also a video game if you want to check that out. It's a great game. Anyway... So it's uh, confirmed that they are leaving Star Wars. They're no longer going to make those trilogies movies, supposedly because they they have a contract with Netflix, that $300 million contract, and they don't have time to do both. Now, here's what I'll, I'll, I'll read you the, their, their quotes. All right, This is from, the, from D&D. We love Star Wars. When George Lucas built it, he built us too. 
Getting to talk Star, getting to talk about Star Wars with him and the current Star Wars team was the thrill of a lifetime, and we will always be indebted to the saga that changed everything. There are only so many hours in the day, and we felt we could not do justice to both Star Wars and our Netflix projects, so we are regretfully stepping away. Now, that is very interesting. Um, I, I like to. Th- I, 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 I'm torn a little bit here because. If I got an opportunity to work on something that's that important to me, and a saga that's that important to me, I would most likely take it. Granted, I'd be intimidated as hell, and uh, I'd be terrified. But, I mean, from the beginning, they could have said no, right? And how do you... To me, there's just something weird about taking another job when you're already committed to one. Your time should have already been committed to Star Wars. You signed that contract first. And then Netflix comes comes over with a bigger deal. Fine. And you're like, oh, I can do both. But at the end of the day, you're like, all right, well, I'm going to stick with Netflix, even though I already committed to one. To me, that's just first off unprofessional. I don't like that. But it, it does. Oh, by the way, here, here's the, the quote from Kathleen Kennedy, who is the Lucasfilm president. David Benioff and Dan Weiss are incredible, incredible storytellers. We hope to include them in the journey forward when they are able to step away from their busy schedule to focus on Star Wars. Now, it sounds like it's very amicable, right? Well, here's what's interesting. Yesterday, I read an article. Let me just see. And it's from Forbes. It it, it was, again, breaking news. And uh, they were D&D. They were in a conference. And, well, yeah. D&D have not made any appearance ever since the the show ended. Or they've, they've been limiting their appearances, right? Because people were very pissed off at the ending of the show. And this... First time, for the first time, they they appeared in, uh, on a public thing in the Austin Film Festival. And, uh, well, a twi- the, the things that they were saying kind of proved a lot of the things that I've been saying for years and a lot of people have been saying for years, and that's the D&D are a bunch of hacks. Now, again, this is solely coming out of a Twitter's, uh, Twitter thread from one person. So, again, it, it could be skewed, but she, she's saying that in the Q&A... David Benioff and D.B. Weiss were basically saying that they had no idea what they're doing when they were making the show. And from the very beginning, it was just pretty much pure dumb luck. And uh, like, I'll just read you a few, a few of the lines, a few of the tweets. They're describing their pitch and how nervous they were. They pitched to Carolyn Strauss, who has a reputation for being tough, a tough pitch. They were very nervous because of how bad we wanted. Um, David is describing the pre-meeting with George R. R. Martin, who was questioning their bona fides, and we didn't really have any. We had never done TV, and we didn't have any. We don't know why he trusted us with his life's work. They acknowledge that they have no idea why, after such dismal pilot, why they went forward. Everything we could make a mistake in, we did. Script, casting, costume. They think HBO went forward because they had a lot of foreign pre-sales on the series. Dan is saying hashtag Game of Thrones was basically an ex- Expensive film school for he and Dave. For example, they had no idea how to work with costume designers, and it was a huge learning experience. The moderator asked why they chose to write all the episodes by themselves, because we didn't know better. David said HBO wanted them to hire other writers, and they decided to have Brian Cogman, their assistant, write four episodes. This is not good here, fellas. Not good. Anyway... Dan wanted to remove as many fantasy elements as possible because we didn't just want to appeal to that type of fan. They wanted to expand the fan base to people beyond the fantasy fan base, to mothers, NFL players, etc. Here's the thing. The books don't really have that much fantasy in it. And at the end of the series, you added all the fantasy! Made no sense. Anyway, I think... Oh, I'm way too hot here. Anyway, let's continue. The moderator is asking them about their comments, acknowledging they didn't understand the characters, and the extra minutes helped them understand the characters better. Dan is saying that he let the actors redefine the roles. Example, Maisie, and they began writing for the actors. It is like the actor moved into the house and redecorated. He said he learned about the characters from the actors. You are... I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop because it doesn't get any better, but... I don't think it gets any worse than that. Now, I'm going to try to defend them. I'm going to try to defend a little bit. So, when you're writing a character, it's a, you have a vision of a person in your head. Then, when you cast somebody for that role, 
they do stuff that surprises you, stuff that you never even thought. It, it's a thing. It's happened to me. I've cast movies. I've written. I've written. I've written short. I've written stories. I've cast stories. Actors do bring stuff to the table. So what I usually try to do in my style of writing is I write the story first, and I write what I want the character to say, and I leave the actor the option of how I want him to say it. So you can put in the personality in in, in or your own spin on that, but this is what I want you to say. As long as you get this particular message across, that's that's all I need from you, all right? Say it any way you want it, a- a- the way that feels best for the character. Because at the end of the day, I got 100 characters in my head, you got one. Well, unless you're, uh, depending on the story or whatever. If it's split, you got more. But you nobody's going to know that character better than you. There's emotions and all that stuff because you're the one who's physically creating them. I understand that. But letting learning from the actor who the character is is nonsensical because they're based on characters on a book the book and the characters already written you all you literally had to do was copy paste what somebody else had already done and if the if the stupid actor comes in and says like do you think there's there's a lot of things that for me, multiple scenes and i I've argued this with people. Here's the problem with actors, okay? Here's the problem with actors. They want to be liked, all right? They want to be liked. They want to, they don't just want to be the bad guy. They want to be like the cool bad guy. They want somebody to like them. Sometimes your character has to suck, okay? So if an actor comes in and is like, hey, how about if instead of saying this, this way, I kind of say it that way and that way, you know, it'll be cooler and blah, blah, blah. You're not supposed to give in. All right, you're the writer, you're the producer, you're the showrunner, you're everything. You're not supposed to give in to terrorists because they don't know what's happening next. You know what's happening next. And you know what happens when one actor does something in one episode that completely changes the dynamic in the next episode, it's going to screw everything up because you already had a, a story for that guy. You already had a plan for that guy, right? You're the grown up here. <laughs> This is the thing I've always said about raising children. Uh, people say like, "No, you got to let kids make their own choices." Sure, let your kids make their own choices, but you give them the options. Same thing with actors. You give them the option, and then they pick the choice. Because otherwise, it's going to screw everything up. And I don't know if you guys know this. Actually, because I went too far. I went too far in saying another episode. Within the same episode, things don't make any sense. Right at one point in the episode, somebody says one thing, and then two seconds later, they contradict themselves because nothing really matters anymore. That's what happens when the when the crazy people run the asylum. You can't. You're the grown up there. And again, for those of you who don't know, when you shoot a TV show, when you shoot a movie, you don't shoot it in chronological order. You might start off with the final scene, and then work, and then the middle one, and then uh, three quarters, and then the beginning. You don't know how it's gonna go. So if one of these a-hole actors decides, you know what, Uh, at the final scene, I'm going to say something that kind of goes this way, and then you shoot the beginning, it's going to completely mess everything up. (laughs) Completely mess everything up. And honestly, that's probably the reason why Game of Thrones was such a mess. And they're confirming it. They are confirming it. And honestly, I feel a part of me feels better because it's like, I knew it. I knew it. I I knew it deep in my heart. Deep the... All the knowledge that I've had about film throughout my entire life l- led me to that thing. But I started, but I kept thinking, no way that HBO would waste so much money on two idiots who didn't know what they were doing. Especially because season one was pretty good. But now uh, you're starting to learn. They the pilot sucked. The pilot for the TV show sucked, so they had to reshoot it because they were already already financially invested in it, and they got actually good writers to to help them out with the pilot. The rest of the season, they kind of just hold. Uh, they held George George R. Martin's hand, and uh, it was fine. I, I think they had a lot of supervision. The I, the issue, the issue I think the show had was that the first season was so successful and it was so well made that HBO was like, "All right, okay, you know, we work, we we worried over nothing. We we over we exaggerated." No, you didn't. All right, it was bad. It was really bad, and it just kept going, getting worse. Anyway, so ah. Uh, this leads us to today's news. The news of D&D leaving Star Wars. Now, conspiracy theory time, this could go one of two ways. Did Disney fire them after they said that? 
or did Disney leak this so that they wouldn't look as bad because they were already going to leave? Does that make any sense? So they said all these things on stage. Supposedly, I'm guessing nobody was supposed to to be recording it or anything. or Because, again, this all comes out from a Twitter thread. So somebody listened. This is secondhand information. Somebody else heard them say it and then typed it down. You're never going to get a verbatim thing, but let's assume that it's correct. Let's assume that's most, let's assume that's 50% correct. Why, why say that only one person said it? Why isn't it just, you know, bigger news? Why aren't there more quotes? Why aren't there other people recording? Are they in a place where they were supposed to not be recording? It's weird. There's a lot of weird elements here. Is it because it was an, a leak and then Disney heard about it and they were like, ah, oh, yeah, we, we don't, I've said, I mentioned this before. Star Wars is in shambles right now. The The first good thing that looks like it's coming its way is The Mandalorian, right? Disney Plus looks like it's going to actually be the, the saving grace, uh, or TV looks like it's going to be the saving grace of Star Wars because right now it's in shambles. The they, the, the, Rise of Sky, uh, the Rise of Skywalker, I, I mentioned this before, I'm, I'm tentatively optimistic, still not 100% convinced, but we'll see. The, the hole was too deep. I don't know how you, you can dig yourself out of the hole and still manage to climb a mountain. It's hard. It's hard. But uh, giving faith to JJ. So the first really good thing that looks like it's going to be coming out coming out is The Mandalorian. And uh, hopefully Star Wars Clone Wars. I really like Star Wars Clone Wars. That show is great. And uh, now they had a planned series with D&D. And they had meetings. And they invested money and time and resources and all of a sudden, they're like, ah, we're, we're, we're parting ways, and, and we're good with it. No problem. Sure, we they're great creative writers. We look forward to them working with them in the future. With your direct competition, Disney is letting D&D walk away to work with Netflix. Again, if you don't know, Disney just started Disney Plus, right? Disney Plus is a streaming service. They just started, they left Disney to go work with Netflix, if you're Disney, you should be suing the living hell out of D&D. Or, I mean, I guess it depends on the contract. But I'd be pissed as hell. I wouldn't be like, oh, we have, we hope to work with them in the future. No, you'd be pissed. The only reason why you'd be like, oh, you know what, it's okay that they left with our direct competition is that you think that they're going to implode so bad that it's going to help you. Honestly. Honestly, I'm. that's what I'm thinking right now. That Disney saw their first drafts, their first idea for what they want to do with Star Wars, and they're like, uh, "Yeah, uh, this is terrible stuff." And so this other thing drops, and all of a sudden they're like, "You know what? If you want to focus on the other thing, it's cool. We we won't sue you. We won't do anything. We'll walk away amicably. Hopefully, we'll be able to work in the future." Or maybe, you know, they were kind of forced out the door and they're like, you, you'll say face, we'll say face. It was cool. You got to meet George Lucas. You talked Star Wars. Just, uh, you know, don't let the door hit you with a good, good Lord split. Yeah, okay? All right? All right? Anyway, that's my theory. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, hopefully it made any sense. I, I, I realized that I got upset there in the middle and just started rambling. But um, I don't know. That's how I feel. Anyway, again, that's it for today. Any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can find me at Dario the Show on Instagram. Also, I'll be streaming again today. Modern Warfare, Twitch, uh, Super Dario World. I'm not sure what hour. I- I'm aiming for three. I'm going to aim for three again. I'm optimistic. You know what? I'll say four because I, I want to go home and work out. So four probably, if not sooner. As always, thank you for listening, and I'll see you again tomorrow.